like I still see lots of resistance in parts of this industry to really adopt the millennial and Gen Z mindsets. And I still see them, I still see it's like such old school, like, oh, they're just looking for a handout and they don't have work ethic. And I'm like, I couldn't disagree more. Yeah. We did have to change the way we ran our company, but we're this proof of when you adopt multi-generational philosophies and you put them together and let everyone build on their strengths and do their thing, you build something far more interesting and effective yeah. than trying to ram old school philosophies down young people's throats. I'm Shane Hofer, CEO of Rocky Mountain Forest Products. Watch how we're changing the industry. Just kind of, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, Brady did all right. It wasn't like he just lit the world on far, but it's like, man, three interceptions says, in a row. he's a leader, you know? Yeah. Shows what, you know, he's have really one of those people defense. that can pull the best out of those around him. I was approached actually by Trevor about being a basically full-time handyman, man. maintenance man, facility guy around here, just talking about everything. He's like, do you know how much you paid Autumn Gold to do X, Y, and Z between these locations? You might want to look into that. So he's just pitching me like I can do all of these things. And then we're only talking about materials and some equipment rental here and there. So I ran the hard numbers, bringing him on and the things that we would be able to do, service level maintenance stuff, not like one-off things that we did last year. It was a no-brainer. We'll come out tens of thousands of dollars ahead. Like I, I know we trimmed those trees back. We talked about the Tabor. But we'll just get rid of all that. It was three feet. So yep. that, that's keep them busy for years. That's what I'm saying. Like there's always something like that. And he's just like, so I've worked for nobody but big companies. He said, so I've always kind of felt that coldness that, you know, no one truly appreciated it. Guy lives in Montana, never seen him, never met him, but I'm making him richer and I don't feel like he even knows who I am. He's like, but then I came here. He's like, in my mind, you took over dad's business. You were just going to sit here and collect your money and sail off into the sunset. It's like, I realized what you guys are trying to do around here is actually pretty big and pretty impressive. And he said, so while you were spying on me and my work ethic, I was kind of spying on you. And he said, but then it's not just what comes out of your mouth. What really spoke volumes to me is how everyone, how much everyone loves this place and their jobs across all, every place I've been. Hey, Tanner. Hey. How we doing? Good. How good. you doing, man? Yeah, doing well. How you feeling for the year? It's off to a good start, man. Yeah, it was very strong for January. Yeah, um, my best January by far, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, as long as we can keep getting material in, I think that's the biggest battle. That's, uh, the, big, that's the big topic every Monday morning when Darren, Mark, and I meet. But, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's your big concern is just supply. Go for the most there. part, um, you know, obviously, I'm always intrigued here, big picture stuff movement forward there's I, I i can't talk about things quite yet but there is um and I, i've gotten a gist i, I think i know a little bit there's movement and um some big things will be some big things should be able to be announced soon and that's also what this platform is going to do so inside of we're trying to do several things one we want to establish ourselves not just as these solid performers but truly thought leaders that are redefining how this industry is done yeah you know, this industry historically has not cared about company culture to a great degree, certainly not at the dealer level. We're going through right now and making job descriptions for everybody in operations. Uh, my goal on that is to have all of those done probably within the next couple of weeks. That way, by the end of February, I can start implementing all of these daily tasks which include things that will save us money. Like, you know, it would be nice if somebody blew off the forklifts every night when they pull them in. You know, like when I use my tools at home, they get dusty and the first thing I do when I'm done in my shop is blow everything off. Um, we aren't doing anything to the list. We're not blowing these ones off, nobody's checking the fluids, etc. Almost cleaned up on the yard. We are on the last two roll-offs out there, so we've gone through three 30 yards. We got wow. two more 30 yards to go. Um, giving some of the decking, we got a bunch of oddball composites. We're gonna, we talked uh, Habitat for Humanity, so they're gonna take some of that, so hopefully we'll take a write off on that. But that, I had, that I wanted to be done by the end of this week, but with all the COVID people, it's gonna be the end of next week, probably, realistically speaking. Will they be picking that up, or are you gonna take it down to them? Uh, we'll be dropping it down to them, because they'll charge us a fee if we have them pick it up. 
So I'm just gonna, there's probably one truck load and they're right down here off the frontage road. So we can just drop it right here at the frontage road. I, I hate throwing stuff away. I think that's huge too because they have not always been receptive to lumber. You know, like their operation's not real well set up for mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so there's been times where they've told us like, no, we're not interested. So if you can develop rapport where so they will be say, willing to take some of those things. what they will and won't take. Yeah, that's just it. So when we take it down, I'm gonna go down there with them uh, to drop it, you know, to get the face time. I didn't know what happened. The only way I knew it happened was I started doing something kind of warm and wet. And I'm like, oh, my nipple ring is gone. And this girl that I was with, whose ha who's name happened to be Michaela, um, <laughs> she's like, what do you mean it's gone? Your chest is bleeding. And she was really ripped and it made her super paranoid. So oh, no. That actually, no, yeah, that, that was the weird one. Nice. Yeah, what is your weird one? So I was in many bands over my high school and college years. And so the guy that was the drummer of the majority of those bands name was Scott but he was covered in sleeves and so everyone called him Tattoo and Tattoo went from being into metal to went to this hardcore multi-year phase of being into Insane Clown Posse oh, oh, no. and so he's like dude they're coming to they're coming to Red Rocks you gotta go with me I'm like yeah he's like come on it's gonna be awesome so I I have yeah. been to an ICP show. Nice. Wow. And I and I've been to a lot of shows and I felt terrified. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was at Red Rocks, it was pouring rain, it was freezing, wow. and I'm like, I'm not going down there. Yeah. It was all GA and all that. makeup's like running down oh, their face. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm just there. Yeah, I obviously have no clown makeup on, and I'm just like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Let's go.